Soul that you see right there, that's the vehicle they're talking about. Slow moving indeed, and it is technically a pursuit, but for the most part, I would call this more of a failure to yield as this vehicle moving very slowly and obeying a lot of the traffic laws. So the consequence for a failure to yield is what? Just well, it's that's the same. It, it, it's just in the verbiage. It's the same type of deal. A pursuit be, to me would be something where it's moving a lot quicker, trying to maybe maneuver away from officers. This one, this car just seems to be driving this morning. You can see it right there. It's the moving cruising. very slowly. Yeah. Just cruising, just cruising along. And I keep doing that Y chat because I just want to see how far back the sheriff's units are. I think they've really just backed off totally right now. I'm going to work with Chris, my pilot, and make sure that the uh, sheriff's ship is still above it. But I do know that and Chris is telling me, yes, it is. It's definitely still here. So they're keeping an eye on it. They're making the call saying where it is. But as far as pursuit, as far as officers right behind it, right now they've backed off. And they're just keeping an eye on where this vehicle is going. That's the plan right now. Dude. Do we know why the police backed off? Well, they backed off because of danger to the public. That is the, you know, it's all policies, and then it it, go, it turns into somebody that makes that decision. There's a sergeant somewhere keeping an eye on what's going on, and that person makes that call, tells the deputies in the field, hey, you know what, we're not going to risk anything, just back off. This car isn't doing anything too dangerous as far as the public's concerned. So the lights and sirens might just be making the driver of this car more tense. These are all things they're weighing out. It, 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 that, that, those are decisions well above me. I'm glad we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. I would hate to be the person making any of those kinds of calls. But right now, it seems to be the right deal. Look at this. This vehicle yeah. just kind of driving along out here. He's keeping like even a safe distance from the other cars in front of him. So I'm hearing you say it Definitely. only becomes a major issue where you've got a, a big police presence if this individual starts weaving and bobbing and, and just causing issue with the public. Yeah, it could. That you know, it's it. It all is all kind of. It's it's. There's a lot of variables involved. There's a sergeant involved. There's the deputies, or, or or let's let's just say officers, because in this case it's the sheriff's department. So those are the deputies. But law enforcement in general, they have you know they have a hierarchy, and the guys on the in the streets, the guys and the gals in the streets, they're the ones that are they're the patrollers, and then they have their bosses that they answer to. They are all making these decisions. They're keeping an eye on what's going on. In this case, a stolen vehicle, the helicopters going to follow it. If this person just kind of pulls over, gets out and runs, that's probably going to be the best result. That way they get that car back safely and they might be able to get that suspect into custody. If not, you know, if this, if this person starts driving crazy and becomes a hazard to the public, that's when, you know, somebody's got to make that call. Do we re-engage the pursuit? Do we turn on the lights and sirens? Do we try to warn the public that this is happening? It's a, it's a delicate balance for sure. So this individual could just keep on driving then. Could, at this point, yes, you know, and then you kind of wonder, does that person know that they're, they're being followed? At, right. Uh, or, or, <laughs> or they're even aware that right now that they're heli there's a helicopter above it? My guess is going to be yes. Uh, the sheriff ship usually flying a little lower, but right now this car just kind of driving along, and like you said, the, you know, this per maybe, maybe they'll just pull over, get out, try to walk away. When that happens, we'll see how close the leather law enforcement is, though, yeah, for we, sure. We, it's we ask that because it does seem like he's he or she is obeying all the traffic signals yeah and is keeping a, a pretty good distance away from the other cars and is not going at a high rate of speed Definitely, definitely, and all these things weigh into the decision that the uh, law enforcement, like the, in this case, I would believe it was a sergeant, uh, basically told the deputies on the ground, you know, disengage, we're not, we're, you know, they were talking, there was a little talk about doing a pit maneuver because of the slow moving of the vehicle and light traffic. The traffic's kind of building up out here, that's for sure, but they decided not to. They were like, no, we're not going to do a pit. I guess there wasn't a deputy that was pit certified. It's also some Something that has to be done. Not all deputies are pit certified. So again, this vehicle continuing to drive, but that doesn't mean they're letting it go. There's that this car isn't on the free. There is a helicopter above it besides us at law enforcement, and they're making the calls right now. They're keeping an eye on where it goes. When that car does stop, it's going to change up quite a bit. I'm sure that there's going to be officers arriving, and again, you know, that's the public safety. And even the, even the driver of that vehicle, that person's safety is a concern of all law enforcement. If you are just joining us, everybody, we are following a police pursuit this morning in Whittier. Stu is overhead in Sky Fox.
It's a stolen vehicle uh, that we're keeping an eye on for you. The driver just appears to be cruising, not going at really any high speeds or even being a hazard to the public. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I lost the IFB there for a moment, Melvin. I heard you make the make the commentary about the the the. the Good driver, good driving effect that this driver has right now. Is he going to get any awards for that? Probably not, but it is definitely weighing into the are they going to chase him or not. Right now, though, I'm going to take a look at the speeds, that, but I would venture to say that they are about the uh, what they should be out here right now and driving pretty well. Now, again, if he gets into a different area, maybe uh, maybe the, the, uh, gets back onto a freeway, California Highway Patrol, they might have a different uh, outlook on this. They might have a different attitude. Also, if it gets into LAPD's uh, area, which it might, we're in a Pico Rivera right now, but uh, if it does, then uh, yes, they could re-engage that pursuit, but right now the Sheriff's Department, they're making that decision. They've got the helicopter above it. They're going to keep an eye on it. I just saw the, their helicopter right there. So this is the guy, they're up there, they're making the calls right now, keeping their officers informed about where that vehicle is, and again, it's just making, it's just driving along this afternoon, and and this is how they're going to start handling a lot of these pursuits because it's all policy right now. And safety is the biggest factor. They don't want to see anybody get hurt, including that suspect. Do you feel like this is part of this individual strategy, Stu, just to, you know, follow the speed limit? Nope. Not because <laughs> no. I'm like, no. why? Because usually no. when you see these pursuits, they're flying by, they're weaving in and out that's of traffic. Well, yeah, because he's stopping all the stoplights. Right. He could be, he has ample, you know, not that we're encouraging, but he has <clears throat> ample room to, to do all this. At what it's point? Interesting. Do you feel like they're going to, they would just ditch this? Yeah. Law yeah, enforcement. I, I, well, they're, law enforcement, I don't think they're just going to give it up. The, the chances are that's not going to happen. Uh, is, as far as that individual, I, you know, a lot of times I have these discussions with a lot of folks, and, and you know, they're, it's, they're, they, it, this, is, this is checkers, not chess. I can almost guarantee it to you. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, some of those suspects, they'll make some phone calls, they'll drive underneath a bridge, or they'll drive into a parking garage. But for the most part, uh, you know, we're dealing with people that are playing checkers. This guy or gal that's driving driving this vehicle right now. He's not doing the, uh, oh, I'm just going to drive normal. They're going to back off and, and I'm going to be able to run. I would venture to say this person is just, you know, in some sort of mindset right now. We do know it's a stolen vehicle, so that does kind of add to it. So the driver does know that uh, he's driving a stolen vehicle. But it, it, as far as a plan to get away, I'm thinking not. I'm thinking that this person just driving right now, probably looking for a spot where he can park or he, she can park that vehicle, just jump out and run. Might be somewhere over here. But now that I say all that, we have seen things change up <laughs> dramatically uh, so many times in the past. Is this a parking lot he's pulling into? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, I was actually thinking maybe he's just going to work and he's just going to kind of blend in, just kind of show up and, uh, He'll you know, He'll just go to work, in. start his day. Yep. Maybe have a yep. coffee. Just be, have a coffee. Uh, I, Again, it looks like a uh, it it looks like a shopping mall out here for sure. The sheriff ship I hear in one of my it, it, off in the distance making those calls, telling uh, the deputy where it is exactly. But definitely driving around a shopping mall right now. And again, I would be wouldn't be shocked if this car just kind of finds a parking spot and then the driver gets out and tries to make his way on foot, or we just drive out of the parking lot. Or we just do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. And of course, as this individual continues to drive and he or she moves into different jurisdictions, there's different rules, right, by way Definitely. of the law enforcement. Definitely, and and then that and that's also what can, might come into play is if he gets into a different area, uh, you know, the, somebody, some other law enforcement might look at this differently. That driver might start driving erratically. That could change things up as well. Uh, right now, though, I, I just wonder does, does that person in there feel like he's being watched? I always kind of wonder mm -hmm. about that. It looks like they're looking right up at us. So he's got to know that there that there's a helicopter above. The sheriff's helicopter, extremely low, probably putting out a lot. Lot of noise but again you can see it just driving the doing the doing the traffic signals driving along pretty normally out here but I would venture to say starting to think about where can I park this car get out and kind of hide and maybe separate myself from that stolen vehicle Stu for anybody who's just joining us right now can you talk about how this this chase began and <coughs> maybe is there more than one person in the car that you've been able to see 
Well, we only see the driver right now. Mm -hmm. We'll try to move around a little bit and see if we can take a peek inside. And I haven't heard about multiple people inside the car. Sometimes we'll hear crosstalk. As far as how this started, started in the Carson Compton area, and it was a stolen vehicle. Deputies got behind it, probably ran that plate, and then the uh, lights and sirens came on, and that vehicle did not stop. At one point, got onto the freeways, the freeway speeds, but then it started using the emergency lane, and it was driving pretty quickly until it got off the freeway, and then basically what we see here, started following all the, uh, all the all the rules of the road, just kind of driving along, keeping those freeway speeds, stopping at stoplights. There was one uh, stoplight it did run at one point. The deputies, well, they backed off. And uh, Chris is uh, my pilot this morning telling me that there is nobody behind it at all right now or even in the neighborhood that he sees out the window. And, uh, well, maybe there is one now just getting into the neighborhood now. So they are making those calls, and that's what happens. Is the sheriff's ship flies overhead, the helicopter. He's making all these calls. Deputies are making themselves conveniently local this is probably the best way to say it. So they might not be right behind it, but they might be a block away or a couple blocks away. So when that vehicle does stop, they'll swoop in and they'll try to capture that driver. Right now, though, it seems to be working well, at least as far as the public goes. This vehicle driving safely, no, no, no public threat, but again, that is a stolen vehicle, and I'm sure that the owner might want it back. Yeah, I would say the one, the one thing to to be thankful for when it comes to this is that he is. This is the most one of the most civilized police chases I've I mean, ever seen. No doubt about it. You know, the other thing I'm thinking here too, Jen, is is you wonder how much gas is in That's that car, mm -hmm. too, right? But I mean, just abiding by the the laws and and the the rules of the road not going at any type of a high speed <laughs> seems no. to be even at that light when he, then the individual was just parked at a light very chill inside the Slowing car down for all the speed humps you know <laughs> right i mean it's it's uh, stopping for all the stop signs and i guess yep. and you do have to wonder i mean it, does he does he know that he's being pursued if the, if the police are oh. that far away from him well, he's, he's got to know that something's going on. And, and as far as, you know, he is driving, let's, let's face it, he is driving well. Um, you know, I'm not a DMV and, uh, you know, a tester, but I can tell you he is driving pretty well. But as far as relaxed, you know, that's about the only thing we can do up here in Sky Fox is try to read body language. And look at that. He's looking around. He's oh, looking yeah. at us. He, he, is, he is definitely, you can feel the tension. So he knows what's going on. Relaxed? I would say no. And there you go. He kind of made a bad move right there mm -hmm. and kind of cut off that car but uh, what's he doing well that's going to be the tough one right there if that you know is is it is he going to a neighborhood is he trying to right. plan a way to get away well we'll keep an eye on it we'll see but right now the sheriff's department they're with us here as well they're down there they're making the calls uh chris does say that he is seeing black and whites in the neighborhood i'm not i don't know for sure if they're the sheriff's department uh because we have made our way into the where are we exactly the whittier area so they might be whittier pd down there right now and they might have a different take on this they might just get behind it turn on the lights and sirens and re-engage that pursuit and or even try to bring it to an end maybe spike strips, maybe a pit maneuver. But right now, that stolen vehicle just kind of cruising around the city of Whittier, and we're yeah. keeping an eye on it with all, with all our viewers. Right, and, 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 you know, one more time, the reason for which there's not a heavy police presence right now is because they have deemed that this individual has not presented as any type of a, a hazard or a threat to the community because they're not driving reckless or no. out of control, right? They're using turn signals, wearing a seatbelt. Yep. Yeah. Yep, using the turn signals, wearing a seatbelt, keeping an eye on it. Might be on his, nah, I don't know, I thought maybe he was getting on a cell phone right there. Maybe he's checking. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have seen the, the, a lot of communication with friends, family, others, and they try to make some sort of plan. Uh, uh, hopefully, you know, it doesn't work. You know, hopefully the driver of the car gets, or the owner of that vehicle gets that vehicle back in one piece safely and nobody gets injured. You know, as far as that uh, suspect getting captured, we always want to see that. But uh, right now, it looks like this uh, driver is just going to be driving the stolen vehicle for a little bit here and uh, they're going to, they're formulating a plan. I am hearing them talk. They may re-engage that pursuit, but where or when 
that's still uh, still an option. We're making our way, uh, still coming up on Whittier Boulevard. It looks like we're going to go straight through it. There's that sheriff ship. That was the shot I was waiting mm -hmm. for. They're still here. They're making those calls. And, of course, uh, sergeants, deputy, uh, sergeants are thinking about possibly reengaging this chase. Stu, what would have to happen in order for them to reengage? Uh, one of their bosses is going to have to sit there and say, you know what, let's try to bring this thing to a stop. Uh, and or they might be trying to get some, a deputy that is pit uh, qualified into the area to maybe do that pit maneuver. And or if, if this driver gets into a neighborhood and we start seeing that common making blocks, they might be able to use the spike strips. So they do have options. They definitely have options. It being a stolen vehicle, though, uh, that's, that's the problem. It isn't like we know where this car belongs. Like if this was uh, something else, like the driver belonged to that vehicle, they would just say, okay, well, we know where this person lives. We'll door knock later on. We'll let him get away right now, but we'll catch him later. But the fact that this is stolen, mm -hmm. they have no idea who this driver is, and they're going to want, that's really what they want. They want to take that uh, driver into custody. Well, and the other question here, too, yes, this individual is abiding by the, 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 the rules of, 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 uh, of the road, driving safely, quote unquote. Uh, how long will they let this go on, do you think? Uh, that's a tough one. That That's a real tough one. Uh, you know, we're watching. A lot of other folks are watching as well. So that, it, you know, really that is a call again for somebody that's pay grade much higher than mine. You know, they, they, they're, made, they're getting paid to make those big decisions. Are we going to stay with it? Are we going to back off? And so it, somebody's got to make that call eventually. The sheriffship's going to stay with it probably as long as their bosses say, hey, it's okay. We're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, the best bet would be the strategy driver just get to where they want to go, park that vehicle, get out, and then the, at least the owner of the car would get the car back in one piece, and then uh, maybe, maybe that suspect would get captured some other time. Stu, I know that you had mentioned there were several officer vehicles in the area. How far back are they? Do we know? Uh, uh, I got to talk to Chris about that because he was giving me uh, information. Cor quarter mile or so away behind hmm. him but oh. then occasionally we'll see uh, black and white apparently in the in other neighborhoods or near cross streets so that's usually how it how it gets played out you know the uh, the the helicopter will make these calls and it is universal that universal it is shared by other uh what well, here we go that was a little unusual mm -hmm. uh and uh yeah see things like that he picking that's up speed? Like that's picking up speed. Yeah. yeah definitely picking up uh -oh. a little bit of speed there and things like that is what's going to cause uh, cause issues, especially on those turns. But the, the helicopter's making calls. Other uh, agencies are able to listen in to those calls as well. They're made aware that a pursuit or a following or whatever this is right now is coming through their neighborhood. And, and so they will be in the area. They won't make their presence, you know, very visible because they don't want to, and I mean this, they don't want to stress out that driver. They don't want that driver to feel like they are being pursued and make irrational uh, decisions. So that's kind of the, the thinking behind not being behind the vehicle, lights and sirens, and just keeping an eye on where it goes. Why do you think he's going at the pace <laughs> that he is? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a tactical uh, thing, right? Maybe, I don't know, maybe he knows that they, they can't necessarily get all up on him if he's driving responsibly like this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but, you know, it's probably just bide your time. A lot of yeah. times that I think that's really just it. Whoever's be behind that wheel is just trying to not be in cuffs as long as possible. Mm. And uh, and that's probably what, what is going on in this uh, person's mind right now. Is, is he going to, you know... He's got his blinker on. You can see he's smoking. I can feel. I can feel the tension just looking at him. I'm getting stressed out just watching. But as far as the law enforcement, they all seem to be cool and calm and relaxed. And we're hearing them make calls constantly, just kind of updating the city, the cross streets. We've got our fancy map up there so everybody can see it. But uh, right now, waiting for a very long traffic light out here in the Whittier Pico Rivera area. And there we go, starting to make that move once again. And it looks like we are going to be getting onto road. Rosemead and just driving along where if he gets onto a freeway California Highway Patrol might pick this up they mm. might have a different idea on how to handle it and there is police presence though we don't see the the the, the lights and the cars <clears throat> behind him there is police presence overhead and you said about 
a quarter of a mile behind him? Yeah, they, uh, Chris just said it again, that they have really, really backed off. All the cars are gone. The helicopter's still here, though, correct, Chris? The helicopter's yes. still here for sure. And, you know, it's a, it's a kinder, gentler law enforcement out here in the uh, California area, especially out in Southern California. And, you know, and, but it, it, honestly, I poke a little jokes at it, but the reality is, is I honestly believe that their tactics are working as far as public safety is concerned. And that is the major concern or the, the, the one, number one prerogative of all law enforcement is public safety. And not being behind this guy, lights and sirens, and uh, this person driving erratically, I believe is actually a good tactic, and it keeps the public safe, so they are doing what they are paid to do, and that's what it's all about, is, is safety, and they just don't want to see anybody get hurt. Property can be replaced, but uh, as far as injuries, you know, we just don't want to see that at all, and even that suspect is something that uh, law enforcement does consider when there is a pursuit or any type of tactical situation. If you're just joining us this morning, we've been following a police pursuit for the last 20 minutes, a pursuit of a stolen vehicle. We've got Stu overhead and Sky Fox in the San Gabriel Valley community. Is that where he is now, Stu, he or she? We are, yes, we're in, the, we're in the San Gabriel Valley for sure. That's exactly where we are. And uh, it's a Kia Soul that they're driving. I, I was trying to stay away from the hamster jokes, but uh, there is no hamsters in that vehicle. It is a, a driver, human being, and uh, they are keeping an eye on it for sure. There's no doubt about that. The helicopter's still here. Law enforcement being told location and uh, speeds and directions. And it, they really just want this thing to pull over and that suspect to get out. And then there's my change up. They might let this guy actually get a little bit of a distance, but they are nearby. That's all I can say. They're not just letting it go. That isn't what has happened as of yet. But right now, stolen vehicle, but it is driving correctly. That's probably the best way to put it right now and safely. And stopping at the stoplights, not being aggressive in its uh, any type of moves out here. And law enforcement choosing to follow this stolen vehicle instead of pursue it this morning. It doesn't look like he really has a, a good direction of where he's trying to go. Just based no, on his driving it, pattern. <laughs> just kind of neandering around down Buying there. Buying time. We, we just crossed the yeah, biding his time. I was wondering if we were going to get onto that on-ramp there. You're going to make another turn, and it looks like we're staying on the majors out here. Uh, but it is seem, starting to seem like we are in a general area. Uh, we've been in the San Gabriel Whittier mm -hmm. type of area right now, so maybe he's making blocks. Maybe he's familiar with this area. I'm guessing that it doesn't have navigation, which you know might have been an option that he could have used today to get an idea where he needs to be. But right now, this I would venture to say this driver just biding his time a little bit while uh, law enforcement keeps an eye on it along with us and uh, we're just going to see where this car goes picking up a little bit of speed here i'm actually going to bring up the speed so uh, the folks at home get oh, nice. an idea as well and uh, you can see it right there but uh, he speeds up he slows down as long as he's not running those uh, not red like lights that. and cutting people off he's not that's, going that's that fast really no he's not no this is no, like i said this is the most civilized police chase i think i've ever seen yet yeah, it, it, a lot of times it's more like a hockey match. This one seems yeah. to be more like a golf uh, tournament right, right. here. Making another turn, it looks like uh, another parking lot, a mm. big parking lot. That This is the second time he's gone through here. Maybe he's looking for uh, you know, a spot to just park and maybe try to blend in uh, in, a, in a store. We've seen that in the past as well. We've actually seen the opposite happen, too. Like a couple times when a pursuit has gone into a, a – like they'll park the car and run into a store. Right. We'll actually see everybody running out of the store. Uh, so right now we're just keeping an eye on it, cutting across some parking spaces right there. But, again, uh, every the, the law enforcement knows where we are. We're keeping an eye eye on it as well. Oh, he's pulling into a parking spot. Parking oh, yeah, a handicap. And a handicap, handicap oh, spot. How dare you? That's not nice. Pulling into oh, a handicap you know parking space. Oh, he's out of the vehicle. I, Open the door. Uh, doors open. Doors open. There he goes. Clearly not handicapped. There we go. Oh. And uh, looks like he's, we're going we're gonna to get Sky Fox around to the other side so we can see the name of the store I'm that he's going into and what so store he's going into. This is where you uh, wonder where wait. we could use the, the, the uh, right. law enforcement, the police, because... Because what, what happens when he goes inside the store? 
Yeah, we're going, we're coming around as quickly as possible. Uh, there, there's a lot of traffic up here, but yeah, we're going to keep an eye on it. I just hope he, there's the sheriff ship. The sheriff ship knows it as well. He's making those calls right now, but he definitely made his way inside whatever this is. I would venture to say, oh, no, he didn't. I guess they were still closed. Maybe he's going to go back over to the car. This would be an uh, ideal time here for officers police. to be in this here, parking lot here comes, right now. Here, here they come. Here they come. Here oh, they come. Oh, here they come. Okay. Here they come. There, there we go. Uh, is he going to? Is he going to be it's, able to get oh into the car and, and start go? The car. No, 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 no. In, no. <laughs> uh, and. Really? Let's see what he does. We're all frustrated Let's too. It, oh no. my goodness! You've got to be kidding me. You have got yes. to be kidding yeah. me. Yeah, and it's got to be so frustrating for all these deputies oh, there we go. down oh, there. Well, maybe not. Well, he's in a parking yeah. lot. He's boxed in right now. He's not going to well, be able to get very far. There, there, there's a couple of, yeah, oh, there's, there's other ones okay. coming yeah. around. All right. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to box him in. Are they going to actually physically in? Oh, oh, oh. oh. That's not good. That's not uh, good. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. The driver, the owner of that car is going to be pretty upset. Uh, I, I, I feel his pain for sure. And now look at that. The driving uh, the driving pattern has changed up a little I'm bit. I'm sure there. it will. Now after that. Uh, yep, yeah. Yeah, I got a little bit of a little bit of a dent. You just wrecked your stolen car into a police cruiser. Up, 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 up. And, you know, these deputies, the doors pop open, and you know that this guy is not going to stop. Right. I wonder if one of these is pit, is pit, uh, pit certified, because now would have that would have been a good time to do it. Yes. Uh, and, again, here I am in a helicopter, no police training at all, calling out saying, you should have done a pit maneuver. Well, well you've I been know, doing this a, it's a while, Sue. Yeah. You've seen a number of these. You have. <laughs> so the speed, so, well, yeah. the speed's not picking but up too it is, much. But it is frustrating to watch, especially when this guy got out of his car. Oh, he's on foot. Into, yeah. Walked into a store. Yeah. Who knows what could have happened? Gets in the car, store. restarts the car. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and you know, and that's the thing. These deputies, believe me, they want this thing to come to an end. You can just imagine their frustration. We're just watching it. Sure. They're down there doing sure. their jobs, and uh, it, it, it gets really, really frustrating. Uh, that driver, though, you know, he really lost his points when he parked in that uh, in that handicap zone, especially for me. Yeah. Uh, right now, though, we're keeping up here. It's a residential neighborhood. Residential neighborhood. I'm going to get a little bit of a peek ahead there. Just a wider shot. There are some some more traffic, but a lot of deputies are getting involved in this right now. So I can uh, let me. I got to turn down one of the, uh, the scanner there. But uh, they are definitely getting back involved in this, and they are going to try to bring this to an end. How they're going to do it? Well, now it's going to be a little tough again. Now that it, the vehicle is on the move, pit maneuver possible. Ooh. Possible. And it could have happened right there. Okay, yeah. yeah it could so have happened so, right so there, what kind of charges would he be? looking at now that he crashed his stolen car into a, an officer's vehicle there that you know that's that that's going to be for the prosecutors to try to haggle about but you know they do tack on that that could have been assault with a deadly weapon mm -hmm. on, an, on a deputy mm -hmm. and uh, and that is a, that's a big one that's a big one that uh, and uh, that's probably that's probably even going to be more uh, more of a weight than the actual stolen vehicle charge. So yeah. this has changed up quite a bit. Ooh. And uh, deputies right now... Now we're stopped. They, 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 yeah, we're stopped and we're stuck behind this person. And I would venture to say lights and sirens are going and uh, folks are trying to get out of the way. You can see this uh, person hearing the lights and sirens moving out of the way. And uh, the key is uh, going to kind of just join the flow of traffic here. So, right, and, still uh, the one there with the go. flow of traffic, those two. Yep, and, and that's yeah. a good thing for all yes, the folks on the road down there. How many cop cars are you counting right now? One, two, three, four, five, at least six, seven? Yeah, six or seven, maybe eight. I feel like this is almost a scene out of an old Blues Brothers movie. There is a lot of officers following this vehicle right now. We went from none to a lot. Let's just say that in, in just one little instance right there. I, I really want to see this come to an end. I don't want to see that vehicle any more damaged. I'm sure if the owner's watching right now at home, I'm sure they are cringing because that was a clean little Kia Soul until that uh, until that uh, suspect bumped into that deputy right there. But you see these guys right here we're kind of poking a little fun at it this is not any kind of fun this is very very serious these deputies have loaded weapons pointed at that suspect and uh, if he makes a poor move makes a we have and guns he's drawn been making a couple yeah. Of yeah. Them. guns are drawn for sure and uh, I, I don't know what's going on end. right now it, he's making some sort of decisions yeah. just do not put that thing in reverse please do not yeah. put it in no. reverse 
and uh, there we go. Okay, oh, there we go. Off. And and we're we're going again. Um, it, it, it's a tough call. Uh, those deputies, it, maybe they are not pit certified. Maybe their bosses are saying don't try to pit it. But that uh, one cruiser seems to be right on his tail most of the time. So maybe if the opportunity does appear and it's safe for all people involved and also property, they might do a pit maneuver. But again, this pursuit on and going, and now I would call this more of a pursuit as you see a number of law enforcement right behind that vehicle and that sheriff ship above making those calls as uh, that Kia Soul leads a number of officers on this pursuit, even another one on the other, other lanes. Uh, speeds, not so high, but uh, the driving continues to be safe, is yeah. the only thing I can say, yeah. waiting for the light. And uh, this is beyond beyond bizarre. You, you kind of would think, um, uh, we know that the, how the rules work, that they don't want to block that suspect in, putting that suspect in a position to harm a deputy. Uh, that's really the truth. Like people will say at home, well, why, are they, why isn't that car in front of him? Well, that's the reason why. Because if he put his vehicle in front or, you know, that deputy put that vehicle in front of that car and then somebody was injured, it would probably fall on the deputy making the bad decision. So that's the reason why they can't do things like that. Um, you know, they're waiting for an opportunity. Spike strips a possibility. Pit maneuver. What is who's going this? on who's here? Who's this individual? Oh, I don't know. Who's this guy? Is he trying to hop in the, the passenger seat? Was he trying to help? Maybe it's his car. Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's his car. Oh. I, don't I don't know. know what that this was. Man is what's doing? this all about? Yeah. It, he looks it, welcome to Los Angeles. There we go. He looks yeah. very upset. Oh, That's for sure. That's up. for sure. If you're just joining us, there everybody, we go. we've been are following up. police pursuit for over 30 minutes now. Stu Mancold was on foot and tried to enter. We don't know what it was, a yeah, grocery you know store what, or otherwise. Do you know what store that was? It wasn't open. Because got back he, in the car. Yeah, yeah. got back in the yeah. car and then crashed into a car. Oh, we're getting into a park, getting into a park, okay. getting into a park area. Uh, you know, when, well, the only reason I say that is a lot of times these, old, these roads just kind of fall back on themselves. I'm going to keep an eye on some of the other deputies. But also there's a lot of open spaces out here. There's a lot of people out here jogging. I don't want to see uh, something happen yeah. where he starts driving on a jogging trail or so there's a, somebody out here this morning exercising. People have their kids Tragedy out, strikes. You know? Yep. Uh, but right now, this would be a, this would be an ideal spot for a pit maneuver. You've got nobody around there. Right. You've got no parked vehicles or anything except for that one. <laughs> and it looks like we're dumping out onto an industrial area out here again. You got to wonder if that suspect actually knew this area. As you can see right there, that's actually a pretty cool move. That uh, deputy basically blocking traffic mm. to make sure that no other traffic makes yeah, their way over idea. here. It looks like uh, it looks like a dead end. Definitely oh. a dead end. Oh. So this okay. is now they've got okay. this guy kind of cornered. Uh, and you know yeah, uh, there's two uh, huge boulders right there. So he's boxed in. Yeah, yeah. And these are this is where me as a where I kind of switch into cameraman mode because you just don't know how these things are going to end. And uh, we definitely don't want to see anything right. tragic happen. <laughs> right. It's been it's been a little jovial to this moment. Now all the tension is on. That driver's got to make some good decisions right now. Get out of that vehicle, put their hands up, go into custody. There's really no place for that car to go, as I can see it. No. And, uh, and, no. and if he makes aggressive moves with that vehicle towards those deputies, this could change up very, very quickly. And whereabouts, what park is this, Stu? Do you know? Uh, I'm trying to find out. We're in the Whittier Narrows area. Whittier Narrows Recreation Area is is what's coming up on our on our map. So that's going to be that area right there. And it's, you can see adjacent to a very uh, industrial area. Um, but uh, we'll keep an eye on what's going on. I'm sure commands are being called. That uh, driver, you know, clearly was trying to get has made every effort to try to get away all morning. They don't have any reason to believe that he is armed. I was so going to ask you that. Yeah. Some because we don't know some some less than lethal right there when you see those uh, those weapons with uh, yellow or orange depending upon what the, the it is either going to be some sort of maybe a pepper ball maybe mm -hmm. some sort of rubber bullets or something like that those are going to be the less than lethal I'm sure that they also have tasers involved this deputy right there has a shield uh, that shield is to protect it is actually ballistic I believe me I don't
don't want to be holding it and have somebody shoot at me. But it does seem like they are already being pretty aggressive in their attempt to just bring this to an end. We've seen uh, seen these turn into, you know, long standoffs. If you're wondering what that deputy is doing, they're going to block them in. They're yeah. going to try to get them to the point where that car can't get any momentum, you know, back up, go forward, try to get out. So they're going to get as close as possible. But when you see that deputy with a shield, that is uh, an indication that perhaps they're going to try to just walk up and open up that door and forcefully take that suspect into uh, custody. Uh, that deputy right there, my, I'm venturing to say, uh, you can see him with the radio. I'm sure that is for a loudspeaker, probably giving that driver commands, saying, you know, come out of the car, mm -hmm. put your hands up. You know, you've got no place to go. The, the, the stuff we usually always hear. So these are, these are sheriff's deputies, local law enforcement? These are sheriff deputies. Uh, I should be better at this, but I would venture to say oh, that this open. is going to be Carson Comp. Oh, there you go. The doors open. Appears to be so Making right. some good decisions. Thank goodness. I am. I. I am happy to see that. I know. For sure. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're happy to see it come to a peaceful end. Hopefully, don't want to speak too yep. soon. But and uh, there you go. Walking back. Yep. Okay. He's on the doing the doing the follow the commands, and there you go. Deputies making that approach, and. Uh, uh, Doesn't look like he's resistant. A little resistance yeah, right a little there. Bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure that, uh, you know, he's got to put up his, his end of the bargain right there as well. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, it looks like that this is coming to an end. We didn't see anybody get out of the car or make any movements, but deputies, they've got to play it safe. Make sure that there is nobody in that back seat. And uh, so you can see guns are still drawn until that uh, suspect is handcuffed and out of the way, and then they'll make that approach. Bringing this to a peaceful end. Minor damage to the car. My, I, I really feel bad for the owner of that car. Yeah. Hopefully that uh, the insurance will take care of it and they'll get Obviously that back. Check in and see if there's anybody else in the, in the vehicle. It doesn't look like there is. So yes, peaceful no. ending to this unusual police pursuit. But which police pursuit is not unusual these days, right, Stu? Right. You've covered many. Definitely. Thank you, Stu. Thank Definitely. you, Stu. We're